go. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. Trust that you are well this glorious morning. I hope that things are going good for you. I'm sorry we missed yesterday. We had some things going on here at the house that we had to get that we had to get get done. Um, so we did the Morning Report on Sunday night. Hopefully it was okay for you uh, that you got it on time, but we didn't do a video. Sorry that we did not, not do a video, but we're doing a video now. Hey, good to see you. I look good. It is fantastic. The weather is awesome. It's great. Um, again, if you are the praying sort, um, pray for the Lawson family. We got some stuff going on. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. I I, I am confident um, that the, everything's going to be fine. But you know what? Having some prayer doesn't help. I mean, doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt at all. Uh, all right. Um, we got lots to talk about. Because there's always lots, lots going on. We have just a few weeks until the November eighth uh, election, uh, which is our midterm election, and you know, in the United States. And I say it that way because there are people who are listening from all over the world to this program, and I appreciate that. Uh, from you know, we have listeners in India, we have listeners in the UK, we have listeners in uh, in Russia, Saudi Arabia, parts of Africa. And, you know, American politics are, it's a curious thing. People are curious as to how we do things and why we do them a certain way. And it's, it's, it's different. It's different, uh, for sure. And um, our midterm elections, that means that the midterm elections are basically, for those people who are, who are listening or watching from out of the country, are the elections between the elections that we elect a president. We elect a president every four years. And the other elections have a lot to do with local state elections, um, governor, um, mayoral elections, uh, House and Senate uh, elections, assemblymen, um, local elections, and of course, the House of Representatives, because we have a bicameral form of government. All the, all the people who are in the House of Representatives are up for elections every two years. Does that cause chaos? You bet your sweet bippy it does, um, but I think that I think that was the, I think that was the message. I think it was supposed to cause chaos. Uh, it was supposed to get a fresh feel for what was I mean what the people were asking for as often as possible. Uh, unfortunately, we've had people who have been in the House of Representatives for forty years, and that was never the intent. Also, one third of the senators are up for re-election every two years because they have six year terms. So they 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 turn they're supposed to turn over every you know every six years. That doesn't happen either because um, there are no term limits. People can stay in the Senate forever. Um, people can stay in the House of Representatives forever because name recognition get, gets them re-elected every single time. So there are, are there are no there are no perfect systems for sure. Um, throwing everybody out of office every single time doesn't necessarily um, guarantee that there'll be anything good because um, people the parties will just replace them with the very same kind of people. Um, it is the fault of the electorate, in my opinion, um, when we don't have the new blood that the system obviously calls for. It's our fault. So there we are. Um, party politics. Uh, who was it? George Washington said that it was a very, very bad idea. Uh, it seemed like he was right. All right, um, we're going to take a little break and get in with the stories right after these messages. All right, again, welcome back to the uh, Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. Yes, the um, the audio broadcast is up on fightmedia, uh, <laughs> fightbackmedia.com every morning. Um, you can check it out, or every day, I, I should say, every morning. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, that'd be awesome if it was every morning, but sometimes it's late at night. Um, you get to see it, you get to hear it. You get the comment. Uh, we try to have as many of the programs up on YouTube as we can. Um, so we are in a always in some sort of uh, some sort of struggle. I don't want to say battle, struggle with YouTube, making sure that um, 
our videos can stay up and uh, so people can have access to them because that's really the deal. Can they stay up so people have access to them? Um, yeah. It's hard because sometimes YouTube brings out a video that's been up for a year and a half uh, and then prevents you from doing new ones. Hmm. Yes. Thank you, YouTube. Sometimes you kind of suck. Uh, I you know I wish there was another way to say it, but frankly, sometimes you kind of suck. Uh, and uh, that may be a, a, a that, may be, that may be enough to get a video taken down. It may be, you know, like they say, you don't want to know, you don't want to know. All right, let's get started with the stories today. Um, I don't know if you saw the video, but the town hall meeting that uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez had just sort of fell into chaos. So when you have people. My, my thought, then when you have people on the left that are hyper, I don't know, hyper leftist, uh, no, no one's going to be as leftist as they are. No one's going to be as woke as they are. And then they sort of come out of the, out, of the, out of the woodwork in a really unproductive way. So when left-wingers start to attack one another, it's best just to pull up a seat and enjoy the blood sport. Then again, of all the things this woman supports and has stated publicly, it's a bit jarring that the ongoing Ukraine war was what was the impetus for her heckling at a town hall. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat from New York, about the, um, the Brooklyn area, faced some fiery progressive anger over her support of the Ukraine war, noting that she voted to send military aid to the Ukrainian Nazis. That's what was said. Um, and is subsidizing an effort that could trigger a nuclear war. This incident occurred on October 12th, uh, as per the New York uh, New York Post. Um, this is a tweet from Jose Vega. Uh, he tweets, my friend Nag Nagatone, Nagatone uh, and I confronted Congresswoman AOC at her, at, on her support for nuclear war and Ukrainian Nazis. I call her out for being a coward in the face of the party that will push us all into nuclear war right now. Will she stand up like Tulsi Gabbard and fight for peace? This is from the New York Post. Uh, far left Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was heckled Wednesday by an even farther left activist who accused her of uh, who accused her during a town hall event of voting to start a nuclear war. Anyway, Congresswoman. None of this matters unless there's a nuclear, if there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine, one protester shouted, according to the video posted on Twitter. The heckler began yelling at Ocasio-Cortez during the Q&A portion of the event, criticizing the Democrats' support for sending military aid to Ukraine as it attempts to ward off a Russian invasion. Tulsi Gabbard, uh, she left the Democratic Party because they're all a bunch of war hawks, the heckler continued. You ran as an outsider, yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a third nuclear war with Russia and China. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? All right. It is kind of interesting when the left just sort of starts eating their own. It's kind of, it, is, it is kind of interesting. Whew. Pardon me, um, but I I have my own thought on um, I think we we have our own thought on our participation in this proxy war, and maybe I don't know maybe it's time not to start not to continue to participate in these things. It, I find it interesting. I don't know about you. I find it interesting that. Um, the former president was impeached over a conversation that he had with the um, president of the Ukraine at the time, the guy who, who was super corrupt and now is the hero of not just the left, but all of Washington, this guy, and, and, and all, of, all, of, all of Hollywood, this guy's the hero. Uh, he's a former comedian. Uh, comic that now was the president of Ukraine, that he and his wife were on the cover of fashion magazines in, in the United States, 
Um, I'm not really understanding it. Vladimir Putin, terrible person. Doing, ready to do terrible things. Uh, let's just say that. So we've got uh, a terrible person and, and a terrible government in the, uh, in the Soviet Union, Russia, in a struggle with one of the most corrupt governments in the world on Ukraine. Why did we send $12 billion to Ukraine and less than, less, less than half a million dollars to Jackson, Mississippi to solve their water problem? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Putin, awful, awful individual. So I hear from both people on the left and the right. So if you don't stop Putin, uh, he'll take over all of Europe. Okay. I don't think that's true, but okay. I hear what you're saying. Um, but how do you stop him? Do you put boots on the back? How do you stop him? Anybody have any ideas? By, by, by fighting a proxy war with the people of Ukraine? Is that what you want to do? Do you want to just prop up Ukraine so they can take your butt with it? And if they lose, eh, it's just money, right? It's not the citizens and the lives and the livelihoods of, of, of everyday Ukrainians. Ah, he lost. You're Russian now. I don't understand. Maybe it's time that we don't get involved. Maybe it's time that we do things differently. You think? I get a little bit more libertarian every day. You think? I think maybe. New polling from Fox News shows that a majority of the country, including majority of Republicans, independents, and a third of Democrats, believe socialism is a bad system for the United States of America. Hallelujah. More than half think the country is becoming more socialist, but six in 10 say that such a move would be a bad thing. New polling found twice as many think such a transition would be a bad thing, 60% rather, rather than a good thing, 32%. Among Democrats, 30, 53% of people think a move towards socialism would be good. And this tweet by Interactive Polls, Fox News poll, U.S. moving away from capitalism and more towards socialism. Socialism would be 60% said a bad thing. Socialism, Democrats say 53% say good thing. Only 14% of Republicans, and this isn't true. Real Republicans don't think socialism will be a good thing. So this 1483 number is cannot be accurate. Independence, 24% to eight to 63% say that socialism is a good thing. So apparently it's not what we want to do. But while polling shows a significant number of Democrats do not agree socialism is a good thing for the country, it also confirms Democrats have in fact become a party of socialism as they push for implementation of the system. On the you know what on the 20 20 midterm campaign trail, Democrats have desperately attempted to portray themselves as moderate while their voting records tell a different story. Tweet from, um, from Becker News, uh, J.D. Vance. <clears throat> I'm not going to take lectures on dignity and self-respect from a guy who, 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 excuse me, a guy caught on video kissing up to Chuck Schumer. We are close to Halloween, Halloween and Tim Ryan has put on a costume pretending to be a moderate. You voted with Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden 100% of the time. JD's right. These people are not moderates. These people are rabbit leftist socialists. They are rabbit leftist socialists. And they are getting it wrong. Because every so often, the data point will stop you in your tracks. We'll see if this is born out of additional data 
uh, particularly exit polling. But if, it, but if this is relatively reflective of reality, it's the type of thing that might get cited quite a lot in the post-election analysis. If it is, Republicans have a big night on November 8th. If we see a red wave as opposed to a, blue, a red ripple, this will loom large. Via a fresh Harvard-Harris national survey, um, most, most important issues facing the country, 37% say inflation, 29% say the economy, and 23% say immigration. And then they ask, what do you think the GOP is focused on? Well, 37% of people ask, what do you think, what do you think the GOP is focused on? 37 of them percent said immigration, 24% of them said the inflation, and 21% of them said the economy. Top three. When asked, what do you think the Democrats are focused on? 27% of them said January 6th, 25% of them said women's, women's rights slash abortion, and 23% said climate change, is that the Democrats are focused on climate change. Well, here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Let me see. Let me get to, let me get to the map here. Here it is. In this ballot, a, gen a generic ballot uh, for Congress, Republican versus Democrat, Republicans lead 47% to 45%. Now, just a few months ago, that was about reversed. Eighty percent of people said in this in this survey in this questionnaire, eighty percent said that the economy was very important. Eighty-seven percent, seventy-six percent of people said that inflation was very important. 68% of people said crime was very important. And 65% said voting and election issues are very important. The economy, inflation, crime, and voting, voting and election issues. Not coronavirus, not issues of race. Coronavirus is last, by the way, with 20, only 26% 20, people, people saying that it is um, very important, while 40% said not to, not to or not important at all. The very bottom of the list of things that are important. So it's what we're, what, what are we focused on? What are we focused on? So I can tell you this. If Republicans win the House popular vote by two points on November 8th, they will net more than 11 seats. 11. And check this out. Um, I'll leave you in, with the shambles that is the Democrat messaging down the stretch. Not even the strong as hell, not even the strong as hell comment from Joe Biden. Um, Brian Riddell tweeted, somehow I don't think Republicans are the party of inflation. Uh, it's going to catch on after two, the two past years. Biden tweets, um, if Republicans in Congress get their, get their way, the prices will go up and inflation will get worse. It's that simple. So now they're saying if the Republicans get their way, inflation will go up. Like, you were in charge and it went up on your watch. Question, what the hell are you talking about, old man? Brian York uh, tweets this, no doubt Democrats' uh, 1.9 trillion America rescue plan fueled inflation. So now Dems are not touting it in, in, campaign rep, uh, in campaigns. Um, the New York Times reports, why? Because it has become fodder for Republican attacks. And another reason is fueled inflation. It's a nightmare. It's important that we stay focused.
it's vital that we stay focused.